Hey everyone, welcome to KC3D Sparks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a basic coffin for your tabletop game. I'm going to make this one kind of more rustic. I want it to be um, something that my characters have to dig up out of the ground and it's not going to be anything fancy. They're just in, on their investigations. They're looking for kind of a hidden body and when they pop this out of the ground, they discover that it's empty. So, with this plain coffin, I am just going to start with a cube and kind of just size it right. I'll leave the default dimension of 2 inches, which is fine. I did switch my scene up to inches instead of the blender units. And I also already changed the scale of my grid to 0.25 as per usual. So let's jump right in with our cube, our default cube. We're going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to get rid of my menu by hitting N because I don't need that anymore, at least not right now. Um, and let's just start getting a basic size ready. Obviously we want it to be more of a rectangle. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in two loops and size that up to about there. Looks good. Whoops deselect everything by hitting A. I'm going to grab these four vertices and size them in. Perfect. This actually is a little narrow. So what I might do is even that up a little bit. I like the shape of that. It could be widened a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about trying to put a mini or anything in here, so I think it's fine. Alright, after we get our basic shape ready, we are going to create the lid. So I will add in another edge loop by hitting Control r and bringing this loop up to where I think I want the lid thickness to be, which I think I like about that. Now to separate, all we have to do since the loop is still selected is hit V and that will actually separate our mesh for us. But we're just going to bring it down a little bit because we don't need it too far. Now of course this needs to be thickened up so I think I showed this in the last video. We'll go ahead and add in a subdivision. No, not that one. We'll go ahead and add in a solidify modifier and I think I like 0.1 inches. Yeah, that's a good thickness. Um, of course, we can always make it a little bit thicker later, so I'm not too worried about it. But it's supposed to be hollow anyway, and the boards aren't that thick. Like I said, it's kind of a rustic, super basic coffin that I'm going for. I mean, obviously, I will add in a few details in a second. But we will go ahead and get out of edit mode and... I know that's what I need and then in order to add in the next details we have to go ahead and apply the modifier. So now we will go back into edit mode and you can see obviously it's applied. For the lid though, I don't want it to be able to move. I want it to kind of like when it's sitting on the table not be able to move around. Um, of course it'll come off. But what we will do to kind of secure it into place without putting like a locking mechanism or anything on it, we will essentially reverse the direction of these vertices. But you can see that it's a little bit off from the modifier. It's not perfect. So we want to fix the sizing of that first. So what we'll do is, because they're a little bit different on each end, We'll just go through individually, and I'll speed through this part. Okay, that's good enough. Now what we will do, because if we just go ahead and bring those faces down now, they'll most likely be too big. We just need to size it down a little bit so that way it'll fit nicely in, in an inset into this. So we'll go back into wireframe view by hitting Z. We're going to grab these edge loops. Oops. Make sure there's nothing extra grabbed. Looks good. 
It's going to go into top view and we are going to size it. We don't want it to go Z direction, so we'll hit Shift Z. And. Oops. Nice. All right. Perfect. That looks like a good inset. So now all we have to do is grab the top loop. Again, make sure there's nothing else grabbed. We'll just go in a side view here and just bring that down to about there. That's a nice lip. Perfect. And I think um, I do want to add some detail to the lid itself. I'm probably going to do a quick frame out. I want to add a plate and a little handle on that plate, kind of like how it's a nail to, into the wood, and a name plate as well. And then I'll probably end up adding a couple hinges on the side. Now, obviously, I'm not going to have this hinge work. What I'm going to do is when the characters decide to try and open the coffin, it's actually going to be like, okay, well, if they um, hinges snap as you open it so that way it just like flies off and goes over there and it's I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it into a trap and that's why it flies off or it just snaps off onto the ground and that's a still work in progress anywho this is gonna be separate I'm not gonna have functioning hinges here but I will add in detail so it looks like there are hinges on the side so first I want to go ahead and inset the top I think. Let's see how it looks. So all I did was extrude the top face and I'm going to, I just sized it in, I'm going to extrude it again and just bring it down some, whoops, that was far, just to add a little lip to it. Um, I like it, however, since I'm going for a much more simplistic rustic coffin, I think I'm going to undo that. Of course, you know, you can design it however you want. If you want to do some insets and other fun frills, go for it, but it's just not the look I'm going for with this coffin. I think I'm going to go straight into adding the faceplate and the handle the nameplate and the hinges, and then maybe some like um, divots or other things to like just make it look like it was kind of beat up, made out of some old wood or something like that. So what we'll do is get out of edit mode because we want it to be kind of separate. And most likely after I get everything lined up, I will separate the lid as well and put it next to it. So that way it's easier to print because I don't want it to print like this. It's not going to be too pretty. So uh, we'll go over how to separate the mesh in a little bit as well. But I want to decorate it first. So once we're out of edit mode, we will go ahead and hit Shift A to add in a cube. Because what we'll do is just make a simple faceplate first. Don't need it very thick want it kind of long. I'm just going to paint on the name later. I want it kind of big. Oh, whoops. Lower that down. It doesn't need to jut out too far. That looks good. Maybe just size it a little bit. Maybe that big. I like that size. Yeah, there's a simple nameplate, and I will add a sphere. Size that way down. Size it down some more to about there. Again, I'm going to have it a little bit big so that way it prints and it's noticeable. Sink that into there, kind of like a big bolt sticking out of the nameplate and we'll just go ahead and duplicate that and move that other to the other side. 
that there looks good. Cool. So that way it looks like it's bolted in. Paint that in later. Now I'm going to duplicate this since it's a good size and add in a plate for the handle to be like bolted onto the wood. That size looks good. Now we will go ahead and add in a cylinder. It's facing the wrong way, so I'll go into front, front camera view by hitting one. Rotate 90 degrees. We're just going to go ahead and size that way down as well. Top view. I'm going to make it longer and then just size it down again. Now we'll go ahead and add a torus. Whoops. Size that way down. Don't need a handle that big. Okay, a little bit bigger. I'm going to hang off of the plate a little bit. down so that way it's kind of flush and bring this down that's kind of like where the hinge is maybe I'll go bring it up there yeah I like the look of that and then I'll grab this duplicate it and then for down here I'm probably gonna want a little bit smaller of a bolt There looks good. Duplicate it, put it on the other side, grab both and duplicate duplicate them both and pull them down. Perfect. Might bring that handle up a little bit though. Yeah, that looks better. Now for the hinge, uh, since this cylinder is already kind of the appropriate size going to duplicate that, go into top view, rotate it 90 degrees, so that way it's kind of lined up. I'm just going to size it up like that. Rotate it so it's parallel with the coffin. I want it to be on this base part. Oops. Let's kind of bring it in so it's touching. That looks good. I like that. Bring them up a little bit, just enough so it looks like it's touching here. And there we go. There's our very basic coffin. I think trying to think if there's anything else I want to do. Oh, I did say I want to add some divots, but I think I'll skip those for now and just test print this to make sure, you know, it looks okay. So before I separate the lid from the base, I will go ahead and blend all of this together. Oh, I didn't name any of my stuff though. So let me name So what we will do is make sure you have the coffin selected. I'm going to see this real quick. Okay, coffin selected. We are going to hit object, apply, whoops, apply rotation and scale. Actually, we want to do that to all of them. So we'll go ahead and just redo that. And it, trust me, that just helps the Boolean modifier work a lot better. Um, sometimes when you don't do it, it applies all wonky and it's just not fun to deal with. So, whoops, go ahead, add a Boolean. We're going to change it to Union. And we're going to just copy that 
a few times. And I like to grab the little eyedropper here and just grab each object as I go along. It's much easier. Of course, you can just click the list and pick out each thing, but I just like the visual itself. And actually, I shouldn't do that sphere first. I'm going to go ahead and apply the nameplate. And then I like to hide them as I go. That's why I wanted to name them so it was a little bit easier. Looks good. So I'll go ahead and apply the two spheres. Looks good. Doesn't look like there's any holes. Perfect. Okay. Nice. I like it. So in order to separate out the lid from the face, what we'll do is go into edit mode. I'm just going to click one of these vertices and hit L and that will select everything that is linked. So makes it very simple. I don't have to go through and select every vertice individually or other things like that. So in order to separate the mesh, all you have to do is hit P and I am going to hit selection. Of course you can do by loose parts or material. Um, but for this one, I want to separate the out the lid, which is what I have selected. So now, you can see, I have them separate. Oop, I forgot to hide that, apparently. <laughs> okay, so now I have them separate. So, in order to print them, I'll go ahead and make these lush with each other, so that way they're on the same Piece. And apparently that is not flush. So what I will do really quickly to make sure that that prints nice and flat, I don't have to worry about the mesh itself, is just hit S, Z, and there we go. And that's nice and flat now. Let's lower this a teeny bit, and they're lined up. Move that over, move this down. Perfect. That might be a little bit too big, but of course we can work with our sizing options just by flipping through here. But as far as the modeling goes, we are all done. If you have any questions, please be sure to leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear any feedback that you have as well. And let me know any ideas that you would like me to create or show you how to make, that would be awesome. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. Be sure to check out my website as well, kc3dsparks.com. I'll leave the link down below, and I will see you guys next time.